All right, let's do an example where acceleration is a function of velocity. So we have a plane decelerating. Its acceleration is negative 0.005 v squared meters per second squared. Notice this isn't t squared. Let's say it starts at 80 meters per second, goes down to 10 meters per second. So let's find out how long it takes and how far it's going to go. So our acceleration is given to us in the problem. Uh, so we have acceleration is equal to, well, first of all, it's also equal to dv dt, right? That's always true about acceleration. Um, but it's given to us in the problem, so we have negative 0.005 v squared meters per second squared. All right, so what we can do now is we'll just rearrange slightly. We'll bring the v squared down and we'll bring the t dt up. So we can go over here and we'll get dv over v squared is equal to negative 0.005 dt. Okay, so now all we have to do is integrate both sides. Put in our integral signs. This is a constant, so we can actually put that on the outside of the integral. The left side is from v naught to v. That's kind of in the way. Uh, and this is from the left or the right side is with respect to t. So we have t naught to t. Okay, so when we integrate this. We can keep going over to the side. We will get the integral of, actually, you know what, we can, uh, we can rewrite this v naught. We know what v naught and t naught is. So let's just do that now. Uh, t naught, we're considering the beginning of this problem to be zero seconds, and it was going 80 meters per second at the beginning. We'll put in the 10 later. Okay, so the integral of uh, v to the negative two, or one over v squared, is negative one over v. Um, from we had 80 and V and this is equal to negative point zero zero five uh, T from T and zero okay so when uh, let's just substitute our values in now we can come down here so we'll get negative 1 over V uh, minus negative 1 over 80, so we can say that's plus 1 over 80. This is going to be equal to negative 0.005t and minus 0. So that just goes away. All right, so let's do something here. Actually, let's multiply this everything by negative 1, and you'll see that that will make us a lot happier. So we can just change that to be like this. All right, so now we divide both sides by 0 0.005. That's the same as multiplying both sides by 200. So we can come over here, and we will find that t is equal to 200 times 1 over v minus 1 over 80. And again, we knew that v was, this is our v final, so we can write this in as 10. 1 tenth minus 1 80th times 200. So if you go and type this into your calculator, you will actually get that the time that this interval takes is actually equal to 17.5 seconds. Awesome. So that's actually the first part. That's the, the answer to the first part of the question. Let's put a box around that. So we found the time. Now we want to find how far it's going to go during this time. So again, let's write, um, let me come down here. Let's write acceleration, again, is equal to dv dt. Now, let's do our favorite trick here. We'll multiply it by 1, or essentially multiply the top and bottom by ds. We'll rearrange this, so we get dv over ds. We can do this because it's multiplication, times ds over dt. We just switch the order of these. And remember, we keep coming back to this, that ds dt is equal to v, right? v is equal to the change in position over the change in time. So we can use that and we can rewrite acceleration is equal to dv and ds times v. Okay, so we can use that. Uh, let's rewrite this again. Let's come down here, actually. Well, we knew that acceleration, um, well, here, acceleration was negative 0.005 v squared 
is equal to v dv over ds. All right, so let's put all the v's on one side and all the s's on the other. So let's uh, rearrange this again a little bit. So we will get negative 0 0.005 ds is equal to v over v squared dv. Okay, so one of these v's is going to cancel out like that. So we can actually rewrite this as 1 over v. So let's go ahead and uh, let's integrate this. So we have negative 0 0.005 the integral of ds, we brought the 0 0.005 outside because it's a constant uh, from s0 to s. And this was equal to the integral of 1 over v dv. Okay, so let's come down here. Um, and actually what we can do is uh, from v0 was 80 to v, and we're actually going to consider that s0 is going to be 0, because we're only interested in the, the distance that it travels during this interval. So at the beginning of the interval, you could imagine that its distance in that interval would be 0. Okay, so we're going to come down, we're going to integrate both sides. We will have negative 0 0.005 uh, times s from s and 0. And this is equal to the ln of v from, we had 80 to v. Okay, so let's plug these in. This we get negative uh, 0.005 times s. I don't like having s's and 5's together, but I guess we can't avoid it in this problem. Uh, minus 0, so that just goes away. We get ln of v minus ln of 80 and the first thing we want to do here is multiply everything by negative 1 you'll see why in a second so this becomes minus ln of v plus ln of 80 is equal to positive 0 0.005s so the ln of 80 minus ln of v we can also write this as ln of 80 over v that's by log rules and we want to divide both sides by 0 0.005. Again, that's the same as multiplying by 200 to both sides. So then we can isolate s. Now s is just equal to 200 times ln of 80 over v. And our v, we can write, was 10. Right? That was our final velocity that we were looking at. So 200 times the ln of 8, or 80 over 10. Uh, and we're going to be able to find that s is just equal to 400 and 16, a little bit of dyslexia, uh, 416 meters. That is how long our plane uh, traveled during this interval that it was decelerating.